Hello everyone, welcome to my online PE lesson. Today we're going to be looking at engagement patterns of different social groups in physical activity and sport. And when we look into this subject, what we're going to particularly focus on is engagement levels in the UK. To start off, we're going to look at participation levels of several different social groups in the UK. Now, 36% of the general population in the UK take part in regular sport and physical activity. Now, I would consider this particularly low, and I know the government is undertaking several different strategies trying to increase participation levels in the UK. If we look at several other different social groups, so for example, only 17% of disabled people will participate in sport and regular physical activity, which is particularly low. In addition to that, BAME, so that is black and other ethnic minorities, 38% of BAME people will participate in sport and activity on a regular basis, which is more than the general population, which is a positive. 26% of lower socio-economic groups, so groups which don't have a lot of disposable income. Only 26% of lower socio-economic group people will participate in sport and physical activity on a regular basis. In addition to that, 41% of males will participate in sport and physical activity on a regular basis, which once again is higher than the national average. And finally, only 31% of females will play or participate in physical activity on a regular basis, which once again is lower than the national average. So we're just going to go over some of the reasons why males play sport and physical activity more so than females. And it's important to establish that sport in the UK is male dominated. And we're going to go over some of the reasons why on this slide. Now, generally speaking, young females will participate less in sport and physical activity because they are encouraged less from their family and peers. So generally speaking, young males will be pushed and encouraged to play sport more so than young females. Now I know this isn't always the case because there's lots of families that push their daughters to play lots of sports and physical activity. But generally speaking, boys are encouraged to play sports more. In addition to that, facilities for women need to improve. So for example, if you were to take a premiership football club and compare the male training ground facilities and the female training ground facilities, more often than not, if not all the time, the male facilities will be better. In addition to that, there needs to be more media coverage of female sports. So for example, if you were to pick up the newspaper and turn to the sports section, you'd probably have to turn the sports section page several times before you found a story about a female athlete. It'd be very focused on male athletes. And for this reason, there's more media coverage of male sports. We're going to look at participation by ethnicity now. And what I want to focus on is why some sports are overrepresented and some are underrepresented. So, for example, if you look at the England football team here, now it's important to establish that only about 3% of the UK is black or mixed race. But if you look at this photo here, about 50% of the team are black or mixed race, which means they are proportionally overrepresented, which means there are more black or mixed race players um, than the general population of the UK would suggest. Um, in addition to that, if I was to show you a photo of the England cricket team, there'd be similar themes, except it would be with Asian players. In addition to that, you'll also get sports in which certain ethnic minorities are underrepresented. So, for example, there hasn't been an a Asian footballer that has played for England. So this would suggest that there's an underrepresentation. Now, there are a number of different social factors at play. Um, and that would be a complete different online lesson. So what I just want to focus on for this slide is why some sports are overrepresented and some sports are underrepresented when it comes to certain ethnicities playing these sports.
Next, we're looking at participation by socio-economic groups, and the sport we're going to focus on is cricket. Now, people from lower socio-economic groups will not have a great deal of disposable income, and for that reason, they have less money to go and play, watch sport, take part in physical activity. Now, if you look at the photo on this slide, you'll notice that the cricket players are wearing a lot of gear. There's pads, there's a bat, there's helmets. There's a lot of kit to buy to play cricket. If you don't have a lot of disposable income, you won't be able to afford to go and buy these things. So it's very important to establish that the lack of money that low, uh, or the lack of disposable income that lower socioeconomic groups have is a barrier for them participating in sport. Next, we're looking at participation by disability, and one of the big barriers is lack of facilities. So, for example, if you go to your local sports centre, more often than not, there'll be no facilities for disability people. In addition to that, there's less access to disabled sports. So, if I wanted to join a local rugby team, for example, there's probably several teams I could join. If I wanted to join a disability rugby team, there's probably a lot less. So it's more difficult for disabled people to access those disabled sports. That's the end of the online lesson. Now it's important to establish that we've only scratched the surface on the barriers to participation in the UK and you probably need to go away and do your own research. Something you could do um, just in between our next online lesson is to start looking in more depth into the barriers into participation in the UK. That's the end of the lesson. Thank you very much for listening.